Hey guys, how's it going? Remington here, and if you've been subscribed to my channel for a while, you'll remember that I did a video on a plugin for Blender called Cloth Effects by AFX Lab. Cloth Effects basically allows you to tear cloth in Blender, something that you haven't ever been able to do before, and it's a really awesome plugin. It's currently available for $50 on the Blender market, and it's only $45 on Selfie, so go Selfie if you can. Since they just released a second version of this, they asked me to do a really quick review on it, and if you haven't seen the previous video on cloth effects, you should go check that out. It goes over the basics, and now this video will go over some of the changes and some of the really awesome new features. AFX Labs was actually nice enough to provide this plugin to me for free, so big shout out to them. It's a really awesome plugin, and hopefully I can use it in some of my upcoming projects. Anyway, let's jump into Blender and take a look at some of the changes and new features. Alright, so I already have this whole scene set up for cloth effects. If you guys don't know how to do this, you might want to go check out that previous video. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump right into it. I have the panel open on my left hand side here, and you can see there are a couple differences from the previous version. For one, tear count is now called cuts, and we have tear offset, and that is now called seed, which are both slightly more accurate names. And instead of checking a little box to preview the tears, instead what we do is we click this little eyeball over here, and this lets us preview the tears. I'm going to go ahead and leave this on, of course, not for the long run, but just temporarily we'll leave that on. And we're going to go ahead and go over some of the things. Now previously there was an option right here called um, Adaptive Detail. And Adaptive Detail basically subdivided it, or yeah, basically subdivided it. Now it's just called Add Subsurf, which basically just makes the subsurface, or not subsurface scattering, I'm so off today. Um, it basically makes it subdivided more, so it comes out a lot better, a lot more detailed. Previously we had an option called edge refine, which should basically get rid of all these cubes and replace it with a nice smooth thing. Now there's an option called jagged edges, and what jagged edges does is essentially the same thing, except it adds in a little bit more detail to make things a bit more accurate, and it bezels off those really sharp, um, those really sharp squares. In addition, we also have edge detail, which will add little cloth pieces in between that can be torn away, which is really awesome, especially when you're working with um, really accurate simulations. And just as before, we have an option called Self Collide over here. I'm going to leave this off though because it's going to take up a lot of space uh, or a lot of time to actually, I don't know, render, process the ana or the physics animation. Let's go ahead and look at some of the other features down here. We have two different options in the Solver Settings tab right here. We have Quality and Collision which we didn't have these before. And basically what these do is they speed up the, uh, well, not necessarily they speed up, they can either speed up or slow down the simulation depending on how accurate you want it to be. So if I had a trigger object right here and I bring it up here and I go ahead and start the animation and I drag this through, oops. Uh-oh, it's not detecting our trigger. Maybe it's because I have preview edges enabled. There we go. Now that it's disabled, you can see our cloth is tearing just like that and it goes pretty quickly, right? Now, if I go ahead and crank up the levels to three, maybe, you'll notice I'm already starting to get lag. I'm getting about 10 FPS in the upper right, and it's very hard to tear things um, without it just completely lagging out. So what we can do instead is keeping levels at three so we still get an accurate simulation, we can drop the cloth steps down to one or two with collision or quality. And this time, when we run through it, you'll notice I'm getting 24 FPS. Oh, that's why it's not rendering. But now you'll notice I'm getting almost twice the FPS amount that I was getting before just by dropping that quality down. It makes processing a lot easier on your computer and you can drop it all the way down to one. Or if you want a really high quality simulation, you can boost it way up. And then for those of you that are looking for dynamics, the dynamics are right over here. Instead of solver settings, just click on dynamics and voila, you have dynamics. You can enable dynamics, you can disable dynamics. All right, so I just finished running a really quick simulation here. It's about 80 frames and previously you could bake, but now the parameters are disabled when baking. So you actually know what object is baked. So if I click bake, our object is now baked, and if we go ahead and click it, you'll see that it runs, and voila, we have a really awesome baked animation. Really awesome uh, physics, actually. If I had the time, I definitely would have cranked up the, uh, the level and the amount of tears, but it's all I have time for today because I'm a little bit busy. So anyway, this is just a very basic view of this plugin. This plugin goes so far in depth and has so much detail and so many uses, it's actually kind of insane. So make sure you go check it out. Once again, it's on Blender Markets and Selfie. Selfie, it's cheaper. Um, so go ahead and check it out there. Anyway, that's all for this video. Thank you guys for watching. And once again, thank you to AFX Lab for providing this plugin for me. It's really awesome and I love it. Can't wait to use it in some other situations. That's all for this video. So I'll see you guys later. Adios.